Hey guys, welcome to yet another WPF tutorial video and as we were in the layouts uh, design element part of the WPF tutorial series, we'll be looking at two different layouts today, a sort of continuation to my previous lessons, previous tutorials. So the first two layouts that we looked at was the grid layout which is a tabular or a matrix like layout which encompasses your elements into a grid uh, based upon the row and column definition that you define for your elements. So that's a very really neat and productive way to design your form into a grid and then having certain layouts embedded inside the grid layout making it for a very decent and professional looking uh, project. So the next layout that we covered was the stack layout. The stack layout fairly simple it's uh, self-explanatory -explan uh, it uses its elements and it stacks them on top of each other if the orientation is vertical and right next to each other if the orientation is horizontal so the stack layout can be used in conjunction with the grid layout by defining the grid row and by defining the grid column so the stack layout is a great layout to work with but sometimes we have the need to uh, keep the stacking of elements to a particular width or to a particular height. So for this particular uh, experiment, we need that the uh, the stack does not overflow, does not go into any other, uh, you know, if it's in conjunction with a grid, it does not go into another, uh, another column like you see over here. The stack is overflowing into my second column. I don't want that to happen. I want it to be wrapped in this particular column itself. To do that, we have a particular layout defined by WPF and that layout is known as the wrap layout and the wrap layout works with the tag wrap panel. So I'll just write down the tag, the wrap panel. Now I'll be adding this wrap panel into the fourth row just to show you how this works. So I'll just define the grid row position as three so it's 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the fourth row is defined as 3. And my column by default is the first column, but still for programmer's convenience sake, we'll write down grid.column 0. So the wrap panel is a little different than the stack panel, but it's an extension of the stack panel. So it works very, very similarly. So I'll just write down orientation just like in my stack panel, and I'll keep the orientation as horizontal. Whoa. Okay, there we go. So the orientation has been set to horizontal and then I'll just define a button and I'll write the content of it as say test. I'll close this button. So we have a test button on to add it onto our form over here. Now I just copy paste and I add four or five extra buttons, six buttons in fact. And now as you'll see it understands the wrap panel understands that the width has been set for this particular column 200 and that that has been defined in my column definition so the wrap panel automatically will take this button and wrap it onto my next particular um, particular row instead of appending and then going beyond my WPF uh, grid column so that is a very neat feature to have and this can be used when the user has the right to resize his window. So this can come in handy instead of setting your height or width to auto always and then doing the configurations based upon the auto resizing. We can just wrap our elements when we know there are going to be plenty of elements that are going to be displayed onto a form. We can then wrap it into a particular particular row or a particular column the orientation obviously has to uh, is vertic horizontal and the exact opposite the vertical now since there was no uh, height set for this particular row you'll see that the height was taken as auto and that's why the six buttons have just stacked one right on top of each other and that's what happens when you have not set any height for this particular uh, particular row. Now, if I just go over here and I change the height to 100, you'll see the difference immediately. Two of the buttons have immediately shifted to the next column and that's how the wrap panel works and that is going to be useful when you have a lot of 
elements may be dynamically generated that's where I used my wrap panels in my, a project that I worked on earlier I had a lot of text boxes that were generating dynamically but I did not want them to be clustered and then override into different columns so I just wrapped them into a wrap panel and it worked like a charm so that's what wrap panel is all about it's an extension of the stack panel and it just does exactly what the stack panel does with the fi fine difference of just wrapping uh, its contents based upon the width and the height so that was all about the wrap panel now we'll be going on to another uh, layout which I think plenty of you are going to be using this is a very important layout and that's why I'm going to be uh, showing it to you into a new window let's just call this a test WPF window and I'll be adding it on my page fantastic now I don't want my grid layout I want to have a very structured but a fixed layout I don't want it to be a matrix but a fixed traditional layout and the fixed traditional layout usually is consisted of uh, the top layer the bottom layer the left layer right layer and the central content layer so for this particular job we have especially built a dock panel layout the dock layout is nothing but docking of elements into uh, into the five five uh, spatial uh, what we can say is layers the five spatial layers as I said before were left right top bottom and center so how do you use this particular layout the dock layout is fairly simple to use you just use the dock panel uh, dock panel tag and inside the tag I will define five elements let's say button content test I am not too creative with this uh, with these naming conventions and also let's just go with basic test so as you'll see I've added five buttons one two three four five okay so uh, the default behavior of the dock panel is visible right in front of us it is going to stack everything in the entirety entirety of the width and the height right next to each other just like a stack but an advantage that we have with the dock panel is that I can dock my elements into positions that I want them to be in so let's say this one goes to the bottom oh sorry and this one goes to the left this one goes to my right and the dock panel the dock goes on top so now I'll just change the content so we have a clear picture of where my buttons are fantastic so as you can see now button number one is in the bottom button number two is on the left three on the right four on top and the fifth one is at the center now to do this we use the dock panel dot dock property of the element this property is enabled for any element absolutely any WPF any element if it is embedded inside the dock panel tag so the dock panel tag tells the elements that this particular tag is going to be used and that's why we need the dock panel dot dock property enabled for this particular element and the properties that you see are bottom left right and top now the alignment of these things is dependent upon the sequences so if I don't write the dock panel dot dock property the sequence will be considered and the elements will be rendered from left so your width and your height will be taken into into the consideration and it will just fill up your form with the elements starting from the left and then encompassing the last element in its entirety of the form so as you can see these the this particular test uh, buttons have filled up the form there's one property that will be very interesting for people who are wanting to use the dock layout 
the last child fill now the last child fill property decides whether the last child which is the fifth element in our case fills up the central now if I turn this property to false you'll see that the last child is actually then stacked to the left so by default if you don't give the dog panel the dog property for any element inside the dog panel tag it will stack it to the left and it will be uh, it will not consider it as the last as the filling element for this particular form so if I turn it to true it fills up that particular element inside my uh, inside my form so it is fairly simple to understand that the last child should fill up the form or it should not by default it will so you can set it to false if you don't want it to fill up so that was the dock panel so we have seen two different layouts in addition to the previous two layouts that we had seen the new layouts that we covered in this tutorial are wrap panel the wrap layout and the dock panel or the dock layout so thank you for watching my video and this has been a another wpf tutorial covering the basics in the layouts if you have any questions queries suggestions or doubts you can just leave a comment or you can even uh, message me through youtube so thank you for watching once again do sh do share this video with your friends if you did like it and obviously leave a comment about it as to what you felt about the video so thank you for watching once again and have a great time